Okay, this is going to be part two of the videos on the Epsilon Delta definition of limits. And just a reminder, uh, if you have not done it yet, I would definitely watch the first video because it shows where this definition comes from and kind of breaks each part down and gives you a description of what it means and what each one of these things really mean graphically. So I would go ahead and watch the first video to start with. And now what we'll do in this video is use this epsilon definition of limit to actually prove that a limit exists. So first of all, let's look at the specific problem that we want to work on, and it looks like this. Suppose you wanted to show that the limit of f of x, in this case uh, 2x minus 3, as x approaches 2 is equal to 1. So uh, we want to prove that this is true using the epsilon delta definition. So first of all, let's go back and write down the things that we know. <coughs> um, on this one, we'll go ahead and plug in. Now what we've got is this. We'll just go ahead and put it right here on the sheet. So we've got the limit of 2x minus 3 as x approaches 2. And you want to show that that's equal to 1. So that's what the problem looks like. Okay, now first of all, let's go ahead and on the graph, let's mark down the things that we know. So you want to show as x is equal, as x approaches 2, that means that c would be equal to 2, so you're going to have a 2 down here. And the function itself, if we just kind of drew a picture of it, this is f of x, and that line is the line 2x minus 3. And finally, you want to show that the limit is equal to 1, so this would be 1 right here. So the idea, as x is getting closer and closer to 2, you want to prove that the y values are getting closer and closer to 1 using this limit definition. Now, before we go back to the actual problem, uh, I'm actually going to do this thing graphically too. And most students don't have to do it graphically. You just have to do the algebraic version of it. But we'll do the graph just to show you what all the parts look like. So the idea is, first of all, you get to pick some epsilon. Remember, you're going to try to put a box around this, as we talked about in the first video. So the idea is I will go up, say, about right here, and I'm going to go up some distance epsilon. So in that case, if I start at 1, and I go up a distance epsilon, it will put me right here. So this distance right here would be epsilon. That's going to define the top of my box. Now I'll also go down the same distance on the other side uh, to right here. This distance will also be epsilon, and that's going to define the top and the bottom of the box. So from here, I'll go, uh, we'll start right here, and draw a horizontal line over to here. And same thing here. Here's the bottom of the box. So we'll go from there over to right here. So now I have to find the top and the bottom of the box. So somewhere over here, um, I now have to pick a delta. And the question is, where should I pick delta? So starting at C, I have to go some distance delta to the right and some distance delta to the left for this definition to hold. But the question is, what is delta? So really on this problem, we'll just kind of put a little question mark over. The question is, delta should be equal to what? <clears throat> so now with that, let's go back and look at the problem that we have to work with. Okay, so here's what you want to prove. And when you work with these, really, it kind of comes in two steps. So to prove this limit exists using the limit definition, um, there's actually two steps in the process, and they look like this. Okay, now the first step is this, is you've picked an epsilon, so now the question is, what should you pick for delta for the definition to hold? And I would suggest the first thing you do is go ahead uh, and plug in the things that you know. So step one will be to define delta in terms of epsilon using this definition. And then step two will actually have to prove that this uh, value of delta keeps you within epsilon uh, on this side over here. So first of all, I would do this is the function uh, is 2x minus 3. So this would be f of x right here. This would be c and this would be L. So first of all, I'll go ahead and just plug in the things that you know. So I've got the absolute value of f of x is 2x minus 3. So I'll put 2x minus 3. Then I've got minus. Um, the limit is 1. 
And I want the absolute value of that, and I have to show that, that is less than epsilon. And then just go ahead and fill this one in too. We've got zero is less than the absolute value. Now, x is what we're going to pick. So we'll have x minus, and in this problem, c is equal to 2. So I've got a 2 right here. And I want to show that that is less than delta. So the idea is go ahead and set the thing up. Now your problem is this. Is let's go back to the graph here. Um, you've got a value of epsilon, but what do you pick for a value of delta? How far out should delta go? And you want to define it in terms of epsilon. So back to the problem here. The idea is to do this. Is since delta is defined in terms of the absolute value of x minus c, if you can start with this and transform it into this, then you'll have a suggestion for what to use for delta. So the idea is to do this. I'm going to start with this right here, and I'm going to transform it into, we'll come all the way over here, transform it into this, <coughs> because that's what delta is, and that's, that'll give me an idea of what to use. So let's start on this side. So the first thing to do is go ahead and you've got minus 3, minus 1, that'll turn into a 2x minus 4 is less than uh, epsilon. Now again, I want to manipulate this until it turns into an x minus 2. So I can do that by factoring in a 2. So 2 times the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than <coughs> epsilon. Now, what I want to do is to define uh, delta in terms of epsilon. So here's an x minus 2. I'll go ahead and divide both sides by 2, which gives me this. The absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon divided by 2. Now, since this right here defines epsilon, it gives you a suggestion of what to use for delta. So the idea is to let delta define delta to be epsilon divided by 2. Now graphically, let's take a quick look and see what that looks like. If you go back over here, <coughs> whatever distance you picked here for epsilon, let delta be half of it. So if I went to here, I'm going to go over to right here, and to right here, um, this distance right here would be delta. This distance right here would be delta, and what that delta is, it's half of whatever epsilon is. But that gives me the left and right edges of my box. <clears throat> so if I go from here up to here, um, and also from here up to here, now I've got a box, and um, I can trap the function inside the box. So at this point, if I pick a value of x, the idea is something here. If I can pick any value of x here, and I go up from here and calculate a value of y, that value of y, go over here, I'll get an f of x. And what the definition says, if you pick any x that's less than delta, so here's a value of x that's less than delta, that will give you a value of y, this uh, this value in here, f of x minus l, that'll be less than epsilon. In other words, if the x value is within the sides of the box, then the y value will be within the top and the bottom of the box. And you can show that the limit exists. So now back to the proof. Okay, now at this point, what you've got, you haven't proved anything yet. All this does, it just gives you a suggestion for what to use for uh, delta. Now, to prove that it works, you kind of reverse the process. The idea is uh, let delta be equal to epsilon divided by 2, and then you'll more or less reverse the process. You'll take this um, right here. We'll go to this part. You'll take this and manipulate it and transform it back into this. And what that will do is says that if you let delta be equal to epsilon divided by 2, and it turns out to be true, then you've shown that this is a value of delta that will give you y values within the range of epsilon. So let's go ahead and do that. And the idea is this, is take this now and move it over to right here. 
and in place of the x minus or x minus 2, in place of delta, put what delta is equal to, which would be epsilon divided by 2. Now, transform this. If you can transform this back into this, then you've shown that it satisfies the conditions. So multiply both sides by 2, and you get x minus 2. And that is less than epsilon. Um, distribute the 2, and you would get the absolute value of 2x minus 4, is less than epsilon. And just a little algebra manipulation here. You've got a 2x minus 4, but you need a minus 3 minus 1. So split this up into 2x minus 4. <coughs> There's the first part. And then put the minus 1 out here. And that's <coughs> um, less than epsilon. Okay, so <coughs> you've transformed this back into this, and you've got it. So again, the two parts of verse. First of all, um, <clears throat> go ahead and just plug in the numbers in each one of them. Then, starting with this one, uh, transform f of x minus l into x minus c. And that will give you a suggestion for delta. But that's not the proof. To prove that this thing works, you then have to take that value of delta and take the x minus c and transform it back into f of x minus l. If you can do that, then um, you've showed that this value of delta will work uh, in this definition right here. So anyway, that's what it looks like graphically and uh, procedurally. Just follow those two steps. So step one, um, manipulate, uh, define delta in terms of epsilon, manipulate this into this. Step two, to prove that it works, uh, Take the value of delta that you've picked and manipulate this back into this. If they, if you get it, then uh, you show that it works.